Welcome everybody to the Comic Book Syndicate. Once again, on this glorious, beautiful Windsor afternoon, we're here to rock the airwaves of the internet <laughs> with some amazing comic book information, some wonderful reviews, and also to answer some questions of some of our loyal fans. Hi, I want to read Green Lantern. Where do I start? Thanks, Hector XV. So, George, if a new reader came into a comic book store and wanted to read Green Lantern, where do you think they should start? There's a lot of great places you can start. Green Lantern has been restarted so many times. Mm -hmm. um, I really like the Neil Adams run that he did with Green Arrow. I know it's yes. not strictly speaking, but I think the artwork's incredible. It's very available almost anywhere. I think they even have it at the library. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the stories are fantastic. You do get a lot of Green Lantern information. Denny O'Neill writing. Yes, Neil Adams art, good stuff. Fantastic. Socially relevant. One of the first comics to deal with uh, issues like uh, overpopulation, racism. Absolutely, uh, yeah. It was thought of for a lot. And some of it does get a little hokey, but especially for younger readers, that's almost because they're simpler stories, I think they're easier to understand. There's like hippies and yeah. other things like that that are a little time dated, but... A little bit. Heroin use, dated. <gasps> no one does heroin anymore. No one. Not now that we have the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, a new reader comes into a store, wants to read Green Lantern. Where do, you, where do you recommend they start? I'd say start right from the beginning with Showcase 22 with Gardner Fox and, and uh, Gil Kane. And I would run that right through to issue 75, right before your Green Arrow, Green Lantern. Uh, it introduces <laughs> a lot of the villains and, and Sinestro and the characters. So it'll kind of give you the essence of it. And you can get a lot of those actually pretty cheap under the black and white showcase sure. books. Yeah. So that's where I would start. Showcase and also there's an omnibus, right? That's right. And, yeah. and there's the DC archives as well. Excellent. And you know what's funny is that's actually my choice as well. To read Green Lantern, there's a lot of really good runs. Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams' run was really good. Len, yes, Len Wine and Dave Gibbons did a run in the early 80s. Steve Englehart and Joe Staten did a really good run. But uh, to, if you're going to start, go right to the beginning. Showcase Green Lantern. Well, you need a lot of that stuff too, even if you want to get What I started with as well when I was a kid was uh, the Green Lantern Corps, right, yeah. which I was lost for a while yeah, and I had to yeah, go yeah. back and find all those issues. That's but right. I mean, even when you're done those, you're, you're Green yeah, Lantern yeah. Corps, the early stuff into today, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, it is. The great thing about the showcase stuff, it was written by Gardner Fox, who, to my knowledge, was a science fiction writer. That's right. Just like a lot of the writers from the, the 50s and 60s. So he has that background. He brings in a lot of the elements that I think have been lost over the years. And I, and I really hope when the, with the upcoming movie that they, they, they really um, stick to those sci-fi roots. Oh, it's you know gotta I mean? be sci-fi yeah. all the like way. Like Isaac yeah. Asimov and Ray Bradbury, that type of feel, you know oh, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Let's hope. Yeah, so you know who we should ask about the new movie, the upcoming movie, in their opinion, is a good friend of mine who happens to be a Green Lantern. It's Bacon Sewer from the mm, Ruben dimension. Now, you know, the thing is, I mean, in our, in our society, we, we try to not judge people by their appearance. No, no, yes, yeah, this, no. This, this Green Lantern is an alien. <laughs> yeah, before and, we... And it's, you know, visage could be a little disturbing to some, but let's, let's ask. There you go. Well, me and all the other Green Lanterns believe that um, it's going to be full of all these awesome special effects and aliens! Thank you very much, Bacon Sewer. <laughs> okay, guys, our next bit we have here is we're going to answer another question from one of our viewers. Let's go and see what they have to say. This question comes from Unblessed Data, and their question is, what's the best monthly comic to read that's out right now? George, what would you say is the best monthly comic out uh, right now? It's been my favorite for years. Anyone who's picked up the trades of either of these two, and they're both Robert Kirkman books, of course, Invincible and The Walking Dead, Anyone who's read the trades pretty much can't wait for the next one. And they've all become huge fans. I, it, to me, it's the essence of comics and collecting because I can't wait for the next issue to come out. I really can't. I will, I, I barely even get it out of the store before I start reading it. Kevin. Well, it's for me, it's been uh, actually Secret Warriors from Marvel. Um, unfortunately, it's ending, and the other one that I would say has been Thunderbolts. Um, Thunderbolts has been good for years, too. Yeah, like, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been pretty read. amazing. Yeah. So I would say that one, to keep, you know, read that one. Uh, I would say uh, I, my, my favorite monthly comic, the one that I absolutely read before, like, I read it in the car. I'm so excited about getting home to read it. Um, but it's Batman Incorporated. But if you're watching this, most likely you probably buy it because it is one of the better selling titles right now. Yeah. So yeah, I will give yeah. props to a more uh, obscure title, Jonah Hex. That is all around the best writing, the best art, I think. So I recommend you pick that up. That's my favorite monthly comic. Thanks a lot. Welcome back, everybody, to Chicago Comic Con. And we're here to talk about getting more comic books into classrooms. And this project, sorry? 
Uh, Reading with Pictures. Reading with Pictures. Reading with Pictures is a nonprofit organization that was started in Chicago to get comics in the classroom and increase literacy and retention levels in underdeveloped readers. Uh, it was founded by Josh Elder, who is a writer for The Batman Strikes for DC Comics, as well as Mail Order Ninja for Tokyo Pop. And so he's been working in children's comics his entire professional career. And while doing uh, library workshops and workshops at schools, he discovered that there was this need to try to use comics as a gateway tool for children that weren't reading as much or just weren't interested in reading overall uh, and try to help them get back up to the reading levels of their peers. So the anthology is uh, just under 200 pages. It's got over 25 stories by award-winning creators, uh, myself included, although I didn't win an award. <laughs> uh, the military actually commissioned a study back in the day, and Fred Van Lente has the last story in here that actually goes into a little bit of detail about that study, um, why all of the military training manuals have both pictures as well as words in there. It's because it increased reading and retention levels amongst their soldiers. That's so awesome. if it can work for the military, why can't it also work for our children? There you go, science and reading. Comic Book Syndicate, assemble!